Hi, my name is Kristen St. Peter, and I'm going to be discussing phospholipids and glycolipids. Phospholipids and glycolipids, as you can see in this picture, are most known to be found in the cell membrane of biological cells. They are amniopathic, meaning they have a polar head that is hydrophilic, water-loving, and they have a nonpolar tail that is hydrophobic, water-fearing. Typically, as you can see here, the heads are arranged so they face outward in, uh, toward the fluid, whether it's intracellular or extracellular, as depicted in this picture, and the tails are arranged so they face one another, um, stacked up together. However, showing in the next picture, they can also come in monolayer, where the heads are again facing the water and the tails are facing the air, as well as a bilayer, as it was just shown in the previous picture. We're going to start off by talking and discussing a little bit more about phospholipids. Phospholipids contain um, two fatty acids, a phosphate group, an alcohol group, and then depending on which type of phospholipid, there's two you're talking about, um, it, they have a specific, specific backbone. So for example, a glycerol phospholipid as shown here has fatty acid residues, a phosphate group, an alcohol group known as the X group that varies, and a glycerol backbone. That is the biggest difference from a sphingophospholipid, as you can see. The biggest difference is the backbones. The sphingosine backbone is prevalent in the sphingophospholipids, hence the name. They have a fatty acid residue, an alcohol group, as well as a phosphate group. And again, on both of the phospholipids, the alcohol group varies depending on what alcohol group is there. We won't be jumping into that today, but it can vary. The next that we're going to jump into is a glycerol phospholipid. Glycerol ph phospholipids are lipids that contain one or more monosaccharide residues, uh, different from a phospholipid in that a phospholipid has a phosphate group, a glycerol phospholipid has a, a monosaccharide residue instead. These residues extend on the outer surface of the cell membranes. The function is to maintain membrane stability attach cells to one another to form tissues and to act as rec a recognition site for signaling um, chemicals. They are found in both the membranes of animals and plants. Just as we saw with the phospholipid, this is a sphingo uh, glycerol phospholipid. We're going to jump over here. I'm going to show you how uh, the phospholip or the sugar residue um, is attached toward the outermost of the membrane. And then we're going to jump into a bilayer so you can see the outermost in a different type of picture. And now we're going to jump into the two different types of glycerol uh, glycolipids. We're going to start with the glycerol glycolipid, which basically contains a glycerol backbone. It has a monosaccharide residue and a fatty acid residue. Then you have a sphingo glycolipid, which has a sphingo, sphingo sign backbone a fatty acid residue, and a monosaccharide uh, residue as well. And this is a picture of the cell. You can see there's a glycolipid hanging out and the bilayer of the phospholipids. So again, just in summary, to help make it a little bit easier, you have a phospholipid that contains a phosphate group and a glycolipid that contains a monosaccharide residue. Then you have two different um, types of phospholipids. Glycerol phospholipids have a glycerol backbone. Then you have sphingo phospholipids that have a sphingo sign backbone. And then if you jump over to glycerol phospholipids, or glycerol uh, lip glycolipids, I'm sorry, excuse me, um, the glycerol glycolipids have a glycerol backbone, and then the sphingo glycolipids have a sphingo sign uh, backbone with a monosaccharide residue. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a little bit out of it and I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. You have a great day.